Hi beautiful souls, it's Tan here today with another interesting astrology video for you. And today we're going to talk about the very interesting, exciting, and life-changing transit that's about to happen in January of 2020th. And that is the Pluto and Saturn conjunction in the sign of Capricorn at 22 degrees that is taking place on January 12th of 2020th. It's actually been in a conjunction throughout the whole of 2019 and throughout 2020th. It will still be in what we call a conjunction, meaning it's very close to each other. You know, I would consider these outer planet transit conjunctions when they're like five degrees within each other, that's gonna have the most impact. But the thing is that on January 12th of 2020th, these two planets in the sky are coming at an exact conjunction. So at exactly 22 degrees. And this is, and this is pretty rare. You know, it doesn't happen often that Pluto and Saturn join in the sky. The last few times that it has happened was in 1914, 1947, and 1982. So globally, we all know that in 1914, that was the time of the First World War. 1947 was the ending of the Second World War, and 1982 was the recession. So pretty big shocking world events um, during those uh, conjunctions and well we all know what's happening right now politically and economically you know in the US and China and things like that something's happening out there guys so this is a big big change in the world that's going on but today we're gonna talk about how this transit is affecting you personally and within your personal life. Because that's what we're all about here on this channel is self-growth, right? But on top of this, on top of this transit, we also have Jupiter coming to the sign of Capricorn, and Jupiter will make a conjunction to these two planets as well. So we've got a bit of luck on our side with Jupiter there. What Pluto and Saturn have in common is that they are both very karmic planets but they play out karma into our lives differently. So before we get started, I kind of wanted to explain to you guys, you know, my interpretation of karma first, first, so that, you know, it helps you to understand what I talk about in this video a little bit. You know, karma, um, from what I've discovered, is that the ability to, you know, have something that we put out into the world come back to us, whether that be a good action that we put out into the world coming back to us, as something good or something shall we say that's bad that we put onto the world and it comes out back to us as bad but however the thing is that what we term bad karma um, is not really what you may think the reason why people you know act on bad karma the bottom line of you know the, the foundation of that is based on fears and insecurities fears is Pluto and insecurity is Saturn and it's also Pluto. Both of them are Saturn and Pluto. So, but they act out differently. You know, to act out on our insecurities, it's kind of been within us since our childhood and the way we grew up. It's an ingrained insecurity and fear. And the moment we act on this in our, you know, adult lives every day, what happens is that the moment we act on it, we immediately will receive something back. Whether that is an actual consequence, like a situational consequence, or whether that is just a feeling of guilt, a feeling of um, shame, a feeling of resentment, a feeling of emptiness. Maybe it's even a feeling of happiness to overcompensate as a defense mechanism for feelings of guilt and shame. Therefore, karma is always happening to us all the time. And this is mainly the cycle of Saturn. So, you know, a, an easy example would be, let's say that, you know, um, you grew up in a family where your parents um, kind of, ke they kept telling you that you were not smart. So you kind of go out into the world and act based on this insecurity. Let's say that you cheated on a test to prove to your parents that you were smart, but it's acting out of the insecurity because your parents told you you weren't. So this is an act of insecurity. 
immediately when you cheat on the test, there's going to be a slight feeling of guilt because you're not supposed to cheat on a test, right? That is already the karma that's coming back to you. And the moment you have that karma, the moment the insecurity stays, and maybe you get a test result back or whatever that might be, but you'll not really be happy about it because you knew that you cheated. And that does not make you smarter. <laughs> so you will still feel insecure because that action did not get to the bottom or the root of the insecurity. So it goes in a cycle, in a loop, okay? That's what Saturn is doing. Now Pluto comes into the mix and Pluto touches Saturn and Pluto asks us to rid ourselves of this ongoing karmic cycle that we keep putting ourselves into because of fears of insecurities. But Pluto asks us to do it in a way where we have to revert, we have to go back and think about the actual trauma that has caused all of this and purge, emotionally purge from it and then transform ourselves completely. So it's a painful process that Pluto puts us into and Saturn tells us that the moment that we have, you know, we're, um, we're doing this purging, this transformation, Saturn tells us we have to work hard on it because it takes time. Saturn's all about time. So that's kind of what's been happening, what's been going on right now in 2019 and then 2020th. So today I wanted to talk about this, you know, conjunction um, in terms of your rising sign, which house it's going to occur in, in your chart based on your rising sign. Now, astrology is a very, very complex subject. Just because you have a certain rising sign does not mean that this um, conjunction is going to happen at that particular house because you could be born a very late degrees rising of a particular sign then the conjunction may occur in a house of the next sign so what I would recommend that you do is that you go to astro.com you drop your chart and you drop the transits and then you see the transits for next year, January next year, and you see which house this um, conjunction is actually happening in. And if you're not sure how to do that, we'll do it together real quickly, okay? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to astro.com, and then you are going to go to free horoscopes, extended chart selection. And then you're going to, you know, add your birth data into the information, and then when you scroll down to where it says sections, you're gonna choose the chart type, you're gonna select, you're gonna scroll down and you will select natal chart and transits. And then you're gonna choose the start date. You're gonna change it from today to the 12th of January, 2020th. And then, you know, I usually use Equal House, so I usually change this to Equal House instead of Placidus, but you can use either one. And that's all. And then you just click click here to show the chart. And then it's gonna come up, and then you're gonna see outside the circle in green, those are the transiting planets, and you're looking for Pluto and Saturn. And then you can basically see which house that's going to be happening in. Now the thing is that, you know, if this uh, conjunction is happening at a very cuspy place of your house, you may want to consider both of the two houses that is on either side of that cusp when you're watching the video. So I'll leave in a, um, a timestamp below or something like that of the rising sign and then the house that, it's, that you should be looking at. Um, but you should follow from astro.com which house this transit is actually happening in. Okay, so now I wanted to tell you that Pluto moves slower than Saturn. So basically what's been happening is Pluto has been within, a, within Capricorn for a really long time. It's probably about seven or eight years that Pluto has been in Capricorn. Um, so that means that Pluto would have been in a certain house of yours, depending on how late degrees that house is. For at least a year probably or two years or three years or four years or five years or more than five years so Pluto has just been slowly 
moving, moving there. Okay, this is Pluto. This is moving that house like this, right? Saturn moves faster than Pluto, so Saturn has just been going around your chart kind of like that, while Pluto is still moving in that house like that. So what's happening this year is that Saturn is really, really close to Pluto because Saturn goes into Capricorn, so it's like that. And then January 12th of next year, Pluto is still moving really slowly, but Saturn will finally catch up to Pluto, okay? So that means that, you know, Pluto has been operating without the, uh, the Saturn for a while in that chart, in that era of your life. So that would have been an area of life in which you felt pretty powerless, um, and then acted on fears and insecurities in that house and that, you know, doing that would have resulted in some sort of karma and it would have been a pretty traumatic kind of trauma related to that house. It would have been a feeling of a loss of power, maybe shame and just a lowering of self-worth within that, because of something that happened within that era of your life. And so when Saturn catches up, Saturn's actually a helpful influence here because Saturn is now making us realize that pattern that's been going on in our lives for, you know, three, four, five, six, seven years, however long it's been going. Without Saturn coming in there, we might not see the pattern very clearly, but we can still purge. But because Saturn is coming in, it's making things more practical. It's putting us more, putting a more mature perspective on what Pluto has been doing in that house, and we are going to be forced to transform and release that karma. Okay guys, so let's get started. So I'm gonna start off first with Aries rising. So for Aries rising, this transit would be happening within your, your 10th house. Now the 10th house has a lot to do with your reputation in the world. It has a lot to do with your career. So there would have been ongoing, you know, throughout the past year of a kind of a setback or very slow moving progress when it comes to your career. You know, if you've been trying to get a promotion, trying to move up the career ladder, it would have kind of felt like it's just not really happening. And Uranus is in Taurus right now, so Uranus would be transiting your second house, the house of money. So it's really about, you know, Am I just doing this job because I wanted the money or can I really get to the root or the core of what it really means to have a job and a career? What does it mean to, you know, what does my calling really ask me to do? And what does, and how does that reflect my self-worth and my values? Because the root that Pluto wants to get you to, the root of your aspirations and your calling is never really about the money. The 10th house is always about a contribution that we can make. Our calling is always about a contribution. So this is going to be a time where you are going to kind of purge those old patterns of maybe, you know, having a career in which there was a need for money. And then when you realize that, you know, you, you are wanting to be more truthful and honest and authentic about your calling in this life, it may require you to leave the job that you're at or leave the career path that you've been going down or it may not if you're already in the right one. But whichever choice you decide to make, it's going to be true or to who you are meant to be in this world. So, you know, the rewards are coming for you. Once you can understand why you're here in the world and what you're here to give, once you can understand that, the promotions, the rewards, the actual money will come to you because you're now in touch with what you're worth, what your values really are. There's also, you know, there might also, you know, because this 10th house, 4th house axis is really about the structures of your life, there, there might be a little bit of an ongoing project with regards to like building home, building a house, having a, a change within the home life. Um, because your, how do I say, your progress in your career is improving, so therefore you feel like you can, you know, use the money to build a house, or you can use this money to start a family, something like that. Um, so that's, that's something really interesting that's going on, and you will realize that the structures of your life are becoming more solid, they're solidifying, rather than being a source of stress for you like it has been throughout the last year or so. 
So the other thing about Saturn-Pluto conjunction is that there can be a lot of resistance. So with this transit, it is really important to not resist your responsibilities. Even if that means you have to work really, really hard in your career. If you give up at the very last minute, right before you're about to get that promotion, then that's a shame. Because you could, you could be working for 10 years like really, really hard and you could almost be there. So don't give up just yet. Don't resist the responsibilities that you have to take. And don't resist your true calling for, shall we say, money. The calling comes first, the money comes after you're in alignment with your calling. So, um, I hope that kind of made sense, Aries Risings out there. Now let's go on to the Taurus Rising. So with Taurus Rising, your um, this conjunction is going to happen in your ninth house, um, with Uranus in your first house. This conjunction is going to provoke a big perspective shift within the way that you see yourself and you see the world you know because Uranus is moving in the first uh, moving through your first house of your physical body and your persona your identity and with this conjunction the ninth house of you know the higher mind of truth um, it's going to become much clearer to you the direction of your life that you should take you know, if there has, you know, one of the things that really enlarges our perspective of what we should do with our lives is traveling. And if there's, you know, travel plans have been really slow for you, like you really feel like you wanted to expand your world, that's not really happening. Now it's going to happen more and you will gain something from that experience. Neptune, you know, Neptune is on this 11th house, 5th house axis. So there could be some emphasis on children, your perspective of that might change or the children will come into your lives to kind of change your perspective of who you are. And if we really think about the moment we have children, <laughs> the moment we have children, we have to change. That's just a fact, right? We're not the same anymore when we have children when we start raising kids. So that can be another thing that can be happening here. But you know, with this conjunction, it's really about understanding, you know, your own truth and the meaning of life for you because I feel that, you know, you have been through something pretty hard, you know, Saturn has just passed by your 8th house. So if there's been anything that's really, really hard on your relationship or on, you know, um, you're like been very heavy on your stress level with regards to intimacy and relationship with another close bond with another person, you're starting to understand the meaning of that, like why that's happened. and you know, you're gonna be a little bit more, you can be more positive about it. You start, you can start to see the overarching bigger themes of pain in general, why that happens, why that happens to you. And that will let you, you know, create a whole new direction in life. There is also, you know, there is also, you know, uh, a, an urge, shall we say, to look into, you know, um, spiritual practices or different philosophies to help you to understand the meaning of these heavy things that had happened in your life so far. And when you can understand that, you can be really fine that this is a time where you really understand existence in general. And when you understand existence in general, you'll know that life is really a comedy. Life is funny. It is. And you'll, this will be a time when you really get that. So because Saturn conjunction with Pluto uses, usually causes a lot of resistance, so it's really important here to not resist and to kind of surrender. Surrender to your own truth. And let that come out and let that change you. Um, don't resist any kind of expansion that's happening within your mind and the way that you see the world. Allow that to change your life. Oh, and Taurus Risings, the other thing I wanted to mention also is that if you have been kind of wanting to teach because you've, you know, you've been gaining mastery over a certain area of knowledge and you are kind of feeling like it's being delayed or there's some limitations to that, it's going to happen for you very soon. And also if you've been trying to kind of um, publish something or writing or blogging, things like that, you know, this is a good time for that. But also the ninth house has to do with legal matters as well. So if some of you are, if some of you are 
you know, waiting to move somewhere, you know, changing your life in a direction where you need visa, you need uh, immigration documents, or just any kind of legal documents that you need to done, and you feel like it's it's been delayed and things like that, this is gonna get it moving. For Gemini rising, the Saturn and Pluto conjunction is happening in your 8th house. Um, so this is this 8th house, 2nd house axis going on here, and Uranus is transiting your 12th house right now in the sky. These are very two very deep, unconscious, watery um, houses within the natal chart. So this is a pretty uh, interesting time that you have going on for you here. This is really about, you know, this time is really about seeing the patterns of your deepest fears and how you might have been acting on those fears. Very classic um, Pluto themes. And Pluto is in his own house, so this is a really interesting time for you to really kind of embrace all things Plutonic right now. You know, fear of loss and how you might bond with certain people in a way that you really attach to them because you really fear losing them, that those patterns are going to come up and this is going to make you see what you are worth. Because if you are in touch with your own self-worth, you'll be okay alone. But if you're not in touch with your own self-worth and you will always be seeking for that through an intimate relationship with another person, you're seeking for another person to validate yourself. And this is a time when Pluto's gonna ask you to purge anything in your past that has been damaging your self-love and self-worth. And, and it's asking you to love yourself so much that you are no longer are acting on any fear of loss within a relationship. Fear of loss usually results in jealousy, you know, possessiveness, uh, which then turns into manipulation and control, which damages relationships at the end of the day. So all of this is being worked at so that you can be a lot more secure and a lot more comfortable within the close intimate relationships that you have. Now the 8th house also has to do with shared resources. So if you feel like the money is really not coming in for you this year, it's just been a time where you just, you really got down to the bottom of it. You know, you might have even felt that you really hated money for some reason. But you, you know, you're gonna come to the understanding that money is necessary. It's an exchange of energy. And if you put out the right kinds of energy out there, the money will come and the money will come uh, very soon. There's going to be rewards for this um, hard work that you have to do in this time. Because Neptune is transiting your 10th house, you know, um, there are some, if you're working with this right, crystallizations in terms of career, meaning that, you know, you're gonna kind of find yourself maybe at a loss for what, you're, what you wanna do in life because maybe what you really want to do is not making the money. Do you know what I mean? But, you know, it's really about balancing that second house, eighth house, meaning that balancing your earnings, um, the earning that you make with this, your own sweat and tears, with the money that you may take it as a loan, or with money that you may invest in order to get back, or you may take it from the bank. You know, find, you know, understanding that there's so many different ways, many different resources out there for you to make money. So the understanding of that is going to allow that flow of money to come to you. So when Saturn conjuncts Pluto, there's going to be a lot of resistance. So it's really important here to not resist and to surrender to your darkness and to surrender to your intimate relationships. Just let it happen. Don't resist it. All right, let's move on to the Cancer Rising. So Cancer Risings, you have this conjunction in your seventh house, and Uranus is transiting the eleventh house. So you've got the seventh house, first house axis going on. So Cancer Rising, this is a really heavy time for you. Um, so this conjunction is going to let you see the patterns that has been happening within your close one-to-one -one relationships or your marriage. So, you know, with Pluto here, this is a very heavy place. If Pluto has been transiting this house for five, six, or seven years, or even longer, if, you know, depending on what degrees your rising sign is, 
you know, Pluto would have brought in a lot of power struggles within your close one-to-one -one relationships, like committed partnerships um, or marriage, because, you know, Pluto is asking you to really think about how you're acting out your fears with regards to commitment. Are you staying with someone because you just want to be committed, because you just want the marriage? Are you marrying someone because you just want to be married? Is there any structure or foundation within the partnerships that you have formed? Or are you in there out of fear? So when Saturn comes, Saturn's going to ask you to almost take like a relationship inventory, basically. Meaning that, you know, looking back at all your past relationships, what are the patterns that have been going on within all these relationships that you've been in? Or if you've been in few relationships, and what are the patterns that have been going on within that relationship and your current relationship? What are the patterns of the way that you act in your relationships with regards to your shadow? Are you not embracing your shadow? And are you seeing your shadow in another person? That is that why your relationships have not been so successful? And is that why you get into such power struggles? So, you know, with this transit in your seventh house, when you come to with the realization, you know, if you are, okay, if you are in a relationship and you've come to the realization that the structure of this relationship is not strong, the foundation isn't strong enough, the foundation is built on fear and not on love, it's going to be a time, it's going to be hard because you're going to have to make a decision about whether you should stay in that relationship if it's unhealthy, should you stay or should you leave? It is possible that there could result in a breakup, but if the foundation of the relationship is strong, then it's possible that this relationship is going to go in deeper and going to be going to another level. If you're not in a relationship and you are single and things like that, you know, this time, this is a good time to really work on yourself for both situations, I think. It's a really good time to marry yourself, to really know, you know, if you were to be committed to yourself, what would you be like? Like, what would you, what are the things in your life that you can really commit yourself to long term? Because the skills of being able to be committed to something long term is the skill that you can use within a partnership as well. And if that skill isn't really there, that it's hard for you to demand what you need or want in a relationship. If you know how you can keep something going long term, then you can demand that within the relationships that you're in. With Saturn and Pluto conjunctions, there's usually a lot of resistance um, in that area of life. So with this one, Cancer Rising, it's really important to not resist your shadow work, not resist doing shadow work and to surrender to any relationship changes that might come for you because it's all happening for your own health and it's all happening for the better. So, Cancer Risings, I hope that kind of made sense to you and all the best. Good luck with this time in your life. Next, let's move on to the Leo Rising. The Leo Rising, the Saturn-Pluto conjunction, is going to be happening in your sixth house. So there's a 6th house, 12th house axis going on here with Uranus in your 10th house. So this is really, you know, really about seeing the patterns that have been happening to you with regards to your colleagues, with your everyday work, the work that you do every single day. There could have been in the past year some stress going on there. There could have been power struggles with, you know, the people at your work. Um, if you're working in the uh, you know, service industry, and there could have been a lot of stresses there because you really had to take care of people. And, you know, it was a responsibility that you take on very heavily. But whatever kind of work you have, it's really, it's the, now you're seeing the patterns of how you are relating to these colleagues or how you are at your work. If work is feeling like it's mundane and it's dragging you down and you're not getting, you know, ahead like you would in terms of the promotions, it's happening. And with Uranus in the 10th house, there can be a career change. Once you realize that maybe the work that I do every day is not the right one for me, um, maybe it's not really giving the world the service that it needs. It could also be in terms of health. So if you've been really trying to get healthy and it's just slow, you're not releasing really the progress, it's coming, it's coming for you. But it comes 
but you know, Pluto wants you to dig really deep into your health. So at the end of the day, it really comes to the understanding that the health is not just physical, it's a soul, it's a mind and a body connection. So this mind, soul, body connection is something that you can be working on during this time. Um, also, the sixth house is actually the house of self-improvement. So, you know, what can you do to um, improve yourself and make yourself a better person? Because when you do that, you can give that into the work that you do. And that's how you can progress best in work, when you've improved on the skills that you need, improved on yourself. So with Pluto-Saturn conjunctions, there's usually going to be a certain amount of resistance. So with this one, Leo Risings, it's really important to not resist your self-analysis. Analyze yourself, see the patterns of, you know, how you are in your everyday environment, how you are at work. Can you change something about yourself to um, have better relationships with people at work, to contribute more to your work? And don't resist any work changes that is necessary because you fully understand what is going to cause you to be happier within your everyday situation at work. Alright, so let's move on to the Virgo rising. So with Virgo risings, this conjunction is going to be happening in your 5th house. So there's going to be a 5th house, 11th house theme going on here with Uranus in your 9th house. So Virgo risings, this is very interesting because the, the fifth house as much as it is a house of self-expression it's also the house of romance so this house uh, sorry this transit you know it can be it could have been you know over the past few years really tough in terms of your self-expression meaning that you could have been trying to get creative and make a piece of work and bring it out there but you might feel like it's just not getting the recognition that you would like it to get or you're just kind of not feeling that it's meeting up to the standard that you have for yourself and you might just tear down that work completely. But it's really about seeing that, you know, the work that you do, it's really not, yes it is, it should come from your self-expression, but when it gets out there, it should also help the society in some way, that 11th house, right? And it's really important to understand that the universe is always co-creating with you, that you are not the sole creator of anything that you make. There's always some, someone, something who was there before you who has given you the power to make what you are creating right now. So this awareness, this understanding is going to allow you to create something during this time that's very powerful. Whatever you're putting out there on the internet from your own self-expression, whatever you're putting out there in the community, you know, your hopes and your dreams is really happening for you once you can understand those two things that I just mentioned and your work can be life-changing it can be soul changing and it can be psychologically changing you know um, for people around you and you know really express yourself in your romantic relationships is going to be very important you know the, the fifth house is the house of the inner child so deep inner child work is going to be a thing here and that can be hard for some people because you know, things happen when we were young that we might have forgotten. And with Pluto and Saturn here, getting to the bottom of what has caused you to feel like you weren't really getting enough mm, love, shall we say, from some parental figure or from something in your environment, there's always a little bit of that within all of our childhood. And to really get to the bottom of that, it's going to allow you to find the kinds of romantic relationships that's really satisfying for you and for you to really express yourself freely within that romantic relationship. Otherwise, there can be this sort of holding back or this kind of um, fear with regards to romance if that childhood wound is not yet worked with. So this is a very interesting time for you, Virgo Risings. Now, so yeah, when Saturn and Pluto are conjunct, this usually causes a lot of resistance in that area of life. So for you, Virgo Risings, it's really important to not resist uh, and to surrender to your self-expression. Um, and it's also important to, in your creative work. And it's also, you know, important to not resist any romantic 
any changes that might be made to your romantic relationships. And don't resist the inner child work. All right, Libra rising. So this conjunction is going to happen in your fourth house. Um, and you have Uranus transiting your sixth house. Now, this is a very hard, interesting um, transit because this transit is going to ask you to think about the patterns that have been happening with regards to your inner security. Um, it's going to ask you to have this balance between getting things in the material world, that 10th house axis, right? 10th house, 4th house axis, in order to feel stable and secure. But if that's not really feeding your soul inside, this time it's asking you to think about why is it that you don't have inner security? And how can you cultivate that for yourself? How can you be reliant on yourself um, for you know a feeling of stability rather than having to rely on a job or career or money or a house and things like that? So it's really asking you to you know think about you know your childhood. Um, the fourth house is that very you know early place of your life. It's like when you're about four years old. So what happened you know before that time that's causing you to um, maybe feel like you didn't quite maybe get that from any of your parental figures and now you're really searching for that outside of yourself somewhere. You know, what can you do to feel grounded? What can you do within yourself to feel safe just by yourself, depending on yourself, becoming reliant on yourself, basically? You know, it's really about sitting with some of your deeper emotions and not kind of pushing it away, but really sit with that emotion, sit with that feeling, knowing how you feel and why you felt the way that you felt. That is creating inner security. You know, there can also be this conflict between going on between your work and uh, physical location. So, you know, kind of like, if you had been like in a relationship where you felt like the work that you had and the work that your partner had were in different locations and there was a bit of a conflict there, um, you know, it might be time to change that somehow or to work with that somehow. Um, there could also be a very sudden or unpredictable money that you can make from work that has to do with the home. If you feel like you are in a job or in a career that has to do with the home, real estate or you work from home or you bring people into your home for work or you actually are an architect and you are uh, working in that field that the money is just so slow the success is not really showing up once you can work with cultivating that inner security the money is gonna come for you it's coming it can be unpredictable the way that it happens as well so that's very exciting but ultimately, this is really about understanding the true structures of your life. That 4th house, 10th house axis is really all about how can you balance the inner structure and the outer worldly structures. So whenever your Saturn and Pluto are conjunct, this has a lot to do, this will cause a lot of resistance. So Libra rising is really important right now that you don't resist your deeper emotions and feelings. Like I said, like you actually sit with it and know where that's actually coming from. Otherwise, the feeling of emptiness will stay and it will remain and karma will catch up <laughs> because you will always be acting in the world, in your job, out of a certain in 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 instability or insecurity from the inside. And also kind of don't resist and just surrender to any family changes or any changes within um, where you came from and your origin. Letting just letting that happen and knowing that if anything were to change within your family, you can still feel stable because you are secure within yourself and you don't need your family to be the same. All right, let's move on to the Scorpio Risings. So Scorpio Risings, you have this conjunction in your third house. So there's that third house, ninth house axis going on with Uranus in your seventh house and Neptune in your fifth house. So. This is going to cause you to have a look at the patterns that you've had with regards to your opinions, your perspective of love and relationships. Um, Neptune is transiting your, the fifth house of romance and Uranus is transiting your seventh house of marriage and one-to-one -one partnerships. And the third house has a lot to do with your opinions. So 
through some difficulties within your environment of uh, your loved ones, of your partnerships, it will cause you to rethink the structures um, that has to do with marriage or the structures of love and relationships. And if there has been some kind of stressful situation regarding like traveling to meet a lover or maybe you're in a relationship with someone that you know it requires some travel but the travels that were done were always kind of uh, stressful or it was just power struggles were going on about where to live you know who's gonna travel next and things like that now is the time for you to kind of reassess those situations but ultimately it's really about whatever you had thought you know when you were younger about partnerships that's going to change because of this um, these kinds of power struggles that you've had it will completely your opinion about it will completely change now because now when Uranus transits the house of marriage <laughs> and Uranus is a very unpredictable and sudden influence it disrupts whatever house that's in there could have been um, a divorce or a separation that happened between you and a lover now with this conjunction in this axis of third and ninth house following a divorce um, could have resulted in some difficult paperwork divor difficult divorce papers or kind of a delay and limitations with regards to what is going on with the divorce papers and things like that so that's going to get better so that's going to get moving much more you know after January of next year um, so you just have to work hard at it and just have to be patient about that now also if you've been kind of also feeling like you wanted to publish something um, you know you wanted to write something like a book or you wanted to publish a blog or you wanted to get yourself into the media somehow and you're, you've got some kind of fears with that or you're not really sure to go about it like this time this energy will cause you to kind of push yourself in that direction a little bit more and you will see the rewards that can come with that or any kind of business papers that you sign with like a company or with your business partners and if that, those papers have been limited or delayed somehow you will get to see that this will get moving for you uh, and in terms of you know the third house rules classes taking classes to kind of boost your uh, seventh house business or uh, business partnerships things like that uh, or boost your, you know, taking classes with regards to your hobbies, you know, that fifth house, Neptune there. Um, this is a great time to get that moving again because now you know what kind of classes you should take, what you should study, what kind of knowledge you really want to incorporate into your life, what really matters to you with regards to knowledge. Um, so when Saturn and Pluto conjunct, there's always a certain amount of resistance going on. So at this time, it's really important that you don't resist communicating. Um, sharing your knowledge, sharing what you know about anything that you know you pick up at this time, sharing your perspective changes within certain areas of your life, and it's also important to not resist and to surrender to any new perspectives that might come up this time with regards to relationships, love, and things like that. So Sagittarius rising. This conjunction is happening in your second house with Uranus in your sixth house and Neptune in the fourth house. So there's the second house, eighth house um, axis going on here. So if you've been feeling kind of limited within your money and financial situation, like you've been feeling like you've been working really hard um, to make a living, but it's just like, what? This is all the money that I'm getting? Or it's just so delayed, um, I'm just waiting for it to happen. It will get moving again, but you have to work hard. You have to keep it going. And most importantly, you have to see your worth in all of this. Because, you know, um, you have to see that because money cannot replace your self-love or self-worth. The self-worth has to come from within, right? And this, at this time of your life, it's, it's going to push that a little bit. If, if you've been feeling you don't have money and your self-worth is also not there, then now you've really got to consider, is my uh, worth, is my worth going to be linked to material things? Or can I be just feel worthy just for being my awesome, amazing self, right? Uh, there's a need to redefine some of your values if need be. There's a need to surrender that. You know, it's like 
if you're standing in a cave and you have everything that you need in that cave, you've got gold, you've got lots of gold, and you you feel like, oh, I don't need anything else, but you're looking outside of the cave and then you see diamonds. Now is the time to reconsider, could I get those diamonds instead of limiting myself to these gold? Because maybe there's a certain value attached to the gold and now it's time to kind of explore what it is that you really value by not limiting yourself to what you already value. You see what I mean? So if you can kind of grasp those diamonds, maybe you'll find that, oh, you actually value diamonds more than the gold because there's something inside of you that resonates more with the diamond. It might have resonated with the gold all your life, but now it's resonating with the diamonds and that's perfectly okay. Well, there might also be this um, wanting to move somewhere with your family. Um, so therefore that might require some spendings to happen. Uh, so there, you know, it's a time where you're kind of looking to balance your earnings with your spending. How can you balance those things out so that you save enough for your family and things like that? So that could be happening for you, Sagittarius Rising. With Saturn-Pluto conjunction, you know, there's always going to be an amount of resistance. So at this time of your life, it's really important to not resist changing your values if need be. Grab the diamond if need be. And don't resist the different avenues that you can take when you can make money. Yes, maybe you can make money from your everyday job, but could you take a loan from the bank? Could you invest in something to get the money in return? Could you borrow from someone? But don't get yourself in debt. But um, all those kinds of things, because you might be needing to spend quite a lot on your family, and opening up to different avenues of getting money is going to be important at this time. Capricorn rising, Capricorn rising, wow. This is going to be a very interesting time for you because this conjunction is happening instead of Capricorn. So it's going to be happening in your first house. So this conjunction in your first house with Uranus in your fifth house and Neptune in your third house is really going to ask you to see the patterns of how you have been presenting yourself to the world, your persona. Have you been holding back your true self because you want to appear a certain way to the public? Are you putting on a crafted mask, shall we say? Because of a certain fear of really bringing your inner self-expression to the world, if that's been happening, this period is really going to ask you to reassess that, those patterns, and to go very deep within who you, who you are, your identity, your inner self, um, maybe your shadow side, and to know that there needs to be a balance between the persona and the inner self. If there's too much persona, then there's going to be a lot of repressed part of you inside. If there, you bring too much of your inner self out to the world, there's no persona, then you're at risk of exposure. And we want to find a balance between those two things. This is a really powerful time for you because Saturn and Pluto in the house of your body is going to cause you to have this powerful energy within you. You know, you're going to have a certain amount of willpower uh, being built up within yourself. You're going to feel more powerful at the end of the, this transit and this conjunction. You know, with the opposing axis being the seventh house, you know, if there has been any situations with abuse or with power struggles within relationships, you're going to be able to finally get that power to fight for yourself within that situation. Okay, you know, because the first house is so instinctual, if you just felt so instinctively drawn to someone and you get yourself into that relationship, but then you find yourself wanting your freedom back again, this will cause power struggles because you could either be in a partnership with somebody who you can dominate because that means that you can control the situation and be free within the relationship and that it's not good thing to be dominating another person or you can get yourself into relationships where the person is dominating you so that you have an excuse to break it off that's these are the two extremes what you're looking to find is how you can find an equal partnership at this time so that you can have your a proper sense of freedom within the partnership as well as have you know as well as being close and intimate with someone to not feel powerless 
in the relationship you're looking for this balance right now and if you can cultivate you know um your own willpower you know your own power your own ability to take charge of your own life um you know you'll feel full and then you can be in an equal relationship with someone um so this is a really interesting time for you it's really powerful right now but you'll come out of it definitely way 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 more confident and more powerful than you've ever been before because you know who you are now you're not walking around with this kind of like mask that you think you should present to the world now you are in alignment with who you are at your core and that's true confidence so with Saturn and Pluto conjunction there can be a lot of resistance within that area of life and for you um, you know it's really important to not resist your power but also about you know using your power in the right way and cultivating a sense of discipline control within certain situations and to not resist and to surrender to discovering the deeper layers of your personality so that you no longer walk with just a mask on okay on to the Aquarius rising so for the Aquarius rising this conjunction is happening in your 12th house with Uranus in your fourth house and Neptune in the second house this is a very interesting time for you Aquarius Risings because this is a time when you are going to feel more connected to the source you know what I'm talking about all your Aquarius Risings the source of where we all came from but in order to get there with Pluto and Saturn here it's a scary place to be and there can be a resistance to really discovering your unconscious because in order to really connect with the source we have to jump off the cliff into the nothingness because the source is not found in safety the source is found in the infinity and the nothingness so there can be a certain resistance here to always stick in the past to stick to what you know to not delve into your unconscious but this, this transit is forcing you to do that because it's telling you that you're so close, you're so close to understanding the everything. You just have to jump. And so this is a time of like, if you feel like you need to see a therapist or someone who's very well versed in, you know, um, psychology, um, psychotherapy and things like that, because it's, it's a good time for that because once you really delve into the unknown of your unconscious, you're gonna find traumas and things that have been hidden in your past way 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 before you were ever can could remember stored up stuff in there and it can be a scary place to be so having someone there to talk to someone by your side someone who's professional um that's going to be really good and you can once once you discover all of those traumas and things and you actually heal from that you learn the value of compassion forgiveness and compassion for anybody who could have done you harm in your past and through that you get closer to the source. That is the true definition of spirituality. The true definition of spirituality, which you are obviously very into at this time of your life, is knowing yourself very well. And to know yourself very well, you have to go all the way into your unconscious. To know your, the deeper motivations of why you do things a certain way, your fears, your hidden fears, all those things. Then you can become a very, very truly spiritual person and then you know where we all came from you know about your soul um i also think it's a really good time to maybe get your akashic records read and things like that yeah i can really see that happening here with this um with pluto conjunct saturn there's always going to be a certain amount of resistance so at this time it's really important of course risings that you don't resist the healing process that you jump in off that cliff into the unknown and that you don't resist the connection that you can have to the everything. So, last but not least, the Pisces rising. So with Pisces rising, you are going to have this conjunction in your 11th house. So you got the 11th house, 5th house um, axis going on with Uranus in your 3rd house and Neptune in your 1st house. 
Pisces rising. For the past couple of years or so, you would have been going through a time where you were considering whether, you know, you really belong within the community or the society that you're in because you are in a process of discovering your hopes and your dreams in this life. And if your hopes and your dreams in this life are really so different from this, the society, then you're struggling with whether, you know, should you adjust your hopes and your dreams to fit in or should you really just go for it? You really should just, just go for it. And um, there could have been some struggles between romance and the community that you're in. You know, you're really figuring out your independence here. The 11th house is a very independent house. It's a house where you just go after your goals. Um, if the goal is regarding romance, you're really going after that to see, to test the waters of your community, to see how they would react. And, but sometimes, sometimes, you know, um, just don't get into the extremes of it, wherein you are in an unhealthy relationship and you're still there, even though your community tells you that they don't agree with what you're doing. So there needs to be a bit of a balance there. If you, you know, follow a certain goal and it seems like the people that you used to know just don't agree with you anymore, it's only because you're about to find new people who are of like minds and who are going to be a part of this new community that you are going to have starting for yourself. You're going to find people of like minds if you're in touch with your real goals and dreams. Working hard and then working hard to achieve those goals and dreams, um, that's going to be happening, but you're going to have to work hard. Hope that was clear for you, Pisces Risings. And guys, I think that's all I have for you today. I hope that um, this video helps bring some clarity to what's been going on in your life this year and what's about to take place very, very soon and how you are going to overcome any kind of um, karmic patterns that's been going on in your life. Um, please leave a comment below if you wish to share your experiences of this Saturn-Pluto conjunction that has been going on um, before the exact conjunction that's happening in January next year. Um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button below if you haven't. If you already subscribed, then thank you very much for coming along on these astrology growth journeys, learning, growing together, and having better relationships with the people around us. All the best to you guys on um, this Pluto-Saturn war that we've got going on inside of us as much as it's going on in the actual real world on a global level. And I'll see you in the next video, guys. Bye!